programming history. It's important to know how we got here. Long ago and far away, computers were very big. They took up entire rooms, and everything was done with vacuum tubes. Computers were incredibly, incredibly expensive, and programmers were very, very cheap by comparison. So the big expense in a computer program was renting computer time. And we didn't automatically, once we get computers, we didn't know how to program. Programming has evolved. It's evolved in just my lifetime. Back in high school, I was taking programming class, and we used something called a go-to statement. And I can remember clearly, now this is 1987, when I was taking programming in high school. And we'd go to the local Sears, because that's where you bought a computer at the time, and you could go up to a computer and you could start typing in programming code, because there really wasn't much of an operating system. You could just start typing programming code when you went up to a computer. And you'd type in something like this. And this would be a basic program. And this would actually work. If you ran it, back in the old days of basic, the question mark meant print. And print actually meant print to the screen. And you could print, hello, sweetie. And if you're line 20, these are your line numbers sent go to 10. This transfers the programming logic back to 10. So it would print this, and then it would continuously loop, causing an infinite loop. But that is a working program, and what it would do is it would display that line of code over and over and over again, scrolling to the screen until somebody else came and stopped it and made it not do that anymore by doing an, an interrupt, like a Control-Alt-Delete. At the time, you would write lines of code, and you would use go to. And so you would have line after line after line after line after code. And then you would have big areas where important routines occurred. And you would just tell it to go to line 200. And this would be line 200. Go to line 300. And this eventually became known as spaghetti code. Because when you were writing a long program with lots of lines of code, the control of the program would go back and forth using go to to make it pass control back and forth, whatever, so that it ended up looking like spaghetti as far as the co where the control of the program was. This was a bad, inefficient way to program. The programs were very hard to maintain. And that means all the time that was spent writing the program was frequently wasted because rather than fixing a program like that, people would write a new program because it was easier. So things were starting to change. Now, I started taking programming classes when I was in seventh grade. And we were using GoTo then. I was using GoTo when I was in high school in the late 80s. I took a break and went back to college in 1997. When I went to back to college, I was learning COBOL. COBOL was structured. Structured programming, when I first learned it, was referred to as go-to-less programming. And as programming evolved, people studied it. How do we do it better? How do we make it more effective? What's the best way to write a program? And what a lot of study and practice evolved is that there's three structures used in programs. And those three structures are a sequence, a decision, and a loop. And anything you program can be written with some combination of those three structures. Those are all the structures you need to program. So we're going to spend a little bit of time focusing on each one of these. We'll get really in-depth in some of the options. But really, sequence, decision, and loop, which have some other names that are used to refer to them the same way, those are the three structures that you will learn in programming. And with the combination of those, you can create any program you ever need to.